In many discussions about Rob Bell's recent book, Love Wins, there have been arguments that his position is similar, if not the same, as C.S. Lewis's in The Great Divorce. These appeals seem to impl imply not only a justification for Bell's position, but also a hypocritical bias against Bell while praising Lewis on the part of those who condemn his form of universalism. Can you discuss the similarities and or distinctions between Bell and Lewis? Yeah. Um, there's a foundational difference between them in that Bell is operating out of sort of a postmodern ethos, the emergent church subjectivist um, sort of uh, sort of thing. And C.S. Lewis was at war with subjectivism through his whole life. He, his book, The Abolition of Man, is a, a devastating critique of a subjectivist uh, ethos, a subjectivist uh, approach. He wrote an essay in Christian Reflections, The Poison of Subjectivism. Lewis was at war with that. One, the reason Lewis is so attractive to evangelicals is that he is bracingly clear. He believes in absolute truth. He just says, this is the way it is. At the end of the day, there's a straight line and there's a dividing line. Lewis. Now, that doesn't mean that I agree with Lewis in every detail about where that dividing line is, but Lewis believes in truth. Lewis believes that there's truth that you can take to the bank, you can count on it, you can build your life on it, you're supposed to build your life on it, and that's why he's attractive to evangelicals. Rob Bell is attractive to the newer brand of evangelical because he's smudging all those lines. Those, those things get very, very blurry, um, and, and, and so there's a foundational difference between them. Now, uh, the second thing is that uh, the people who are appealing to Lewis and the Great Divorce and other places, uh, Lewis talks about uh, uh, eternal destiny of various people in the last battle. He talks about it in The Problem of Pain. He talks about it in, uh, in The Great Divorce and, of course, in the Screwtape Letters. Um, uh, Screwtape proposes a toast. Um, anybody, who, uh, anybody who can read Lewis and come away thinking that he didn't believe in hell and the existence of damned souls, uh, is, it, it, that's mind-boggling. Um, now, someone might differ with Lewis on the definition of damnation or what, what causes damnation or the mechanism of damnation, but Lewis firmly believed in damnation. George MacDonald, one of C.S. Lewis's uh, heroes, attitudinal heroes, you might say, was a universalist, and Lewis puts him in The Great Divorce and gives, puts, gives him the role of defending the, I, the concept of hell. The whole point of the great divorce is the, the day of judgment is approaching and people are making their choices and they're going this way. There are people in the gray town and the gray town is going to become the black town and then they will come. And then uh, uh, in, on the other side, further up and further in as you have in the last battle and so forth. In the last battle, you have all the creatures in Narnia run up to the door uh, look Aslan in the face. Some of them recoil at fear and hatred and veer off into the shadow, and the others come in. Now, um, to, to try to make Lewis the poster child for um, universalism is just simply um, uh, risible. And, and people who do that, it's not surprising that they do that with Lewis because they, they do that with the Bible.